Hi everyone, I'm Konaya Madhakar from Physics Department of Brandeis University. Today I'm going to tell you about my journey in science and a bit about my research. So before I start my story, let me introduce you to my hometown, which is Kolkata. It's a city in the eastern part of India. Uh, Kolkata has a very rich cultural heritage and we Bengalis are absolutely proud about every aspect of our culture, be it literature, language, uh, festivals, art form, leadership roles, scientific contributions, anything. So here we have, uh, I'm showing you a picture of uh, our most popular Bengali festival, Durga Puja. And here we have a picture of a typical Bengali meal. And here we have two heritage sites. Uh, we have Howrah Bridge and then the other is my own alma mater, Presidency College. So growing up in such a city, uh, I got introduced to a lot of options early on in life. My school used to offer a whole range of subjects which are listed here. And it was compulsory for us to take all of those. In school, I was really fond of art and craft and coding and grammar. Um, I was very observant of phenomena and I used to, I was um, very keen on finding general patterns in diverse phenomena. This is something that really helped me later in my physics career. But in school, I didn't really foresee myself going into physics because I used to dread maths. Uh, in sixth standard, I failed in arithmetic and algebra, and that increased my fear for mathematics like tenfolds. And then one of my, uh, one of my teachers gave me this idea that uh, I can invest at least one hour to practice mathematics every day. And once I started doing this, I started seeing some changes, which is I was getting more confident on taking maths problems or even my grades started rising. And by the time I graduated 10th standard, I got full marks in maths. This episode taught me something important. It taught me that if I really want to achieve something and if I put in hard work, I would succeed at it, no matter how difficult or intimidating it might seem in the first place. It also taught me not to judge my abilities based on my early failures. And this is a teaching that remained with me till date. So after school, I went to do a BSc in physics at Presidents University. Uh, so I had a few more failures in both my major and minor papers during this time, not because I was weak at any of that, but because I was spending way too much time with some papers that I really liked. Uh, so during, uh, during this time, I was really into experiments. I remember spending entire holidays working on experimental projects in, in labs. It was during one of these projects that I got introduced to Python programming language and I liked it so much that I wanted to learn more about it. But my college didn't offer any courses on Python at that time. So I took up the challenge to teach myself Python. And uh, I did that myself, I taught myself and I also went on to teach other interested students from my department because I thought knowing this is a really good skill to have, especially in a subject like physics, where we often deal with uh, simplistic ideal cases, which um, cannot be realized in laboratory experiments. And we need to depend on simulations to test those ideas. And I'm glad that I learned uh, Python taking some time out of my regular uh, studies because it's coming super useful to me now with my research. So after BSc, I went on to do MSc from the same, uh, same place. But during this time, I was involved in a research project at International Center for Theoretical Sciences. And this project introduced me to the, to the interdisciplinary field of active matter. And this is a project that, that was entirely theoretical, which meant it required me to shift my focus from experiments, which I absolutely loved before, to hardcore theory. And here I had to use theoretical tools, which I had never studied before. So it took me some time and um, effort to get into this uh, project, but I uh, kept pushing, taking one hard at a time. 
and within some some time i was getting better at it uh, within a few years we published two papers in peer reviewed journals and this also taught me something i observed that even though i was completely into, into experiments earlier but having an open mind to learn new things helped me adjust uh, into my new theory project and succeed at it easily and then uh, i was introduced so at icts i was introduced to brandeis university i came to know about it from my current advisor professor gurgu chakraborty who was visiting uh, icts at that time she told me how brandeis is a very close knit community and has experts in both theory and experiments it got me really interested and i um, decided to come here for a phd so i moved to waltham in 2019 and immediately after i came here uh, i was faced with problems that I had never faced before like i was lonely that to 9 to 10 time zones away from home i had to adjust to the western culture i had to adjust to the climate and i had to take care of myself my health finances my house everything on my own and this was a hard time and it took me quite some effort to cope with all of this uh, and i'm still uh, still in the process and i'm really grateful to uh, to my advisor for making me feel right at home in her lab i think now is a, uh, now i should tell you a bit about my research um so i work on something called active matter and here are a few examples of active matter systems Uh, on the top left, we are looking at a flock of sheep, which is trying to go through a narrow um, gate. And then down here, we have a, a crossroad where pedestrians are moving in all directions. And then on the right, we have a flock of birds murmuring in the sky. And in each of the systems, the components are living organisms, which are executing uh, executing some simple motion. but giving rise to a long range uh, ordered structure like the birds in this example in this in this clip they are just following their neighbors but in the process they are giving rise to this emergent behavior and these beautiful structures in the sky a common feature of active matter systems is that each component in the system is capable of converting energy at a local scale each of these birds they derive energy from food and convert that energy into mechanical energy of motion or flight and by doing so they push the system away from equilibrium so our motive is to understand the dynamics of these systems with a simple model but before we can understand these systems we need to observe them and as you can tell we cannot bring 10000 birds inside the laboratory to 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 have uh, to perform experiments on them so we need to uh, uh turn to more manageable systems like the one on the right uh it is a micro it is a molecular protein that is working on a microtubule both of these are subcellular components and we can uh tune them easily in lab uh so when this microtubule and kinase and motors are present in large numbers they form something called act active gel and these gels have wonderful uh, and very interesting flow properties like i'm going to show you this clip from an experiment where we see a lot of these microtubule bundles uh when kinases work on them they extend and then they bend and buckle they even break and remerge so there's a lot of things going on uh, here and we want to understand this all these phenomena using some simplistic minimalistic model and that is where my work comes in i perform computer simulation on simple models with simple dynamical rules and uh, try that we think would help us mimic this complex behavior so what i essentially do is to create a world and populate it with agents like microtubules and kinase motors and then we specify rules that for each of these agents about how they can move or how they can interact with each other and that is uh, our simple model 
we put this model to test by performing uh, the simulation and comparing the simulation result to our experiment results. And sure enough, in the beginning, they don't match. So we keep on improving our model. And uh, we, we keep improve, improving till we are satisfied with how our model can predict real life uh, phenomena. And that is how we use computer simulations and insight from uh, real laboratory experiments to develop a model that would help us understand these complex active systems. Thank you.